It's whiskey battle time, folks. It's Isla battle time. It's Lagavulin versus Lafroig. Lafroig 10 cast strength versus the Lagavulin 12 cast strength. Which one's the best? Let's find out. Hello there folks and welcome back to the Whiskey Friend with me Alan Here we are again, Whiskey Battle time What a battle, it's a blockbuster battle This is, could be a pay per view battle It's Lagavulin 12 cast strength, special release 2021 And it's the Lafraig 10 cast strength, this is the batch 13 So, look to put these head to head both samples guys, I've not tried them, I've never tasted them before, this is going to be a straight off, no notes, no nothing, I'm just going to, I've poured these about an hour ago, I think the Lafroig sample was sent to me very generously by Vlad from the Whiskey Malt content, uh, Vlad's got a fantastic channel guys, if you've not checked him out, dive over, have a look, I'll pop a link into the description to his channel, and Mr, one of my Patreons, Mr Tim Allett, has sent me the Lag of Villain 12 cast strength, don't know too much about them. I have had the batch 11 and the batch 12 Lafroy cast strengths. Uh, this one's dropped back a little bit in ABV this time. It's 57.9. Non chill filtered. Yes, it's colour. If you have a look at these guys, you can probably see the difference in colour. And, and I believe both of them are coloured anyway. So we won't get, pay much attention to the colour. Uh, I do believe they're both non chill filtered. But let's see how these two go head to head. I say there's no notes guys, I've had them covered up for the last hour, I've got Whiskey Friend coin number 171, batch 2 coin, and I've got 172 on the Lafroig. so yes, I'll pop links into the description guys if you want to pick up some coins, if you want to support the channel, links are in the description. So, wow, what can I say, the Pete Johnley has been going great, I think this is... Heading towards the climax. This might be the last one. I'm not too sure. If there's any other peated whiskies that I haven't done, guys, and you want me to do the peated whiskies, dive into the comments and let me know. But I think this might be a nice way to end it. Two big blockbusters, two heavyweights, two big boys, two bad boys, two Isla boys. Let's see how they compare head to head. So I'll tackle the... I may as well do the Lafroig for the Lafroig first, which is the darker of the two. If you can pick up that colour, massive difference. But yeah, we won't pay any attention to the colour. But let's do the nose. So the Lafroig 10 cast strength. Batch 13. I do believe this is first fill ex bourbon cast, guys. Wow. That typical medicinal notes there, the TCP, the iodine, everything you would expect from a Lafroig is there. Those top notes are there, that's the, the iodine, the brain, the maritime, the TCP. But however, once you get past it, it, it really gives you lots. There's, there's loads of road tar, but there's a real, real nice sweetness. But I think it's coming from the nice orchard fruit. And I think the lovely vanilla note as well from that, those ex-bourbon casks. Toffee, vanilla... There's a real, real nice honey sweetness coming from it as well. Little touch of red fruit. Some red fruit going on in there. And then there's typical that. There's a char note. Bit of barbecued smoke. Barbecued meats. It's about a little bit of savoury note coming in. But it's smoky. It smells like it's going to be super salty. And there's a really nice malty note in there as well. So it's it's like a little bit of a digestive biscuit, which, well, I wasn't expecting that one. Maybe some cereal note, breakfast cereal. It's beautifully, beautifully balanced on the nose between that, the, the Isla, the peat, the smoke, the orchard fruits, the medicinal, the maritime, all of that, that sea salt, that sea breeze, it's all... It's all quite wonderfully. It's actually got a really, really nice, sweet, fruity, smoky, salty nose, man. It's all going on in this one, isn't it? Let's see how the uh, Lagavulin matches up. 
Okay, so that's that's different. I know they're both Isla. They're both smoky, they're both PT. They're both they're very, very different. Colour wise tells you right away they're different, but on this lag of ruling it has all that kind of maritime. Wow. I think this is in refill bourbon casks, American oak casks, full maturation of twelve years in this. I've no information on both of them guys because I've got I've just say I've I'm trying to find a way of going through all these samples that I've got. So I'm just taking these right off the top of my head. Anybody's got any info, dive into the comments, guys, and let me know in the comments. The difference with this one, it's it's, it's smoky, it's peaty, but it's it's much more outdoor, it's much more grassy, it's much more veggie. Got a real veg, veg vegetal note. But at the same time, it's it, that smoke's there, it's it's meaty, it's savoury, it's salty, it's briny. Real, real nice. Those smoked meats are there. Smoked meats, bonfire smoke, barbecued smoke. But at the same time, there's a lovely, there's a sweet vanilla again, but there's a real, real nice lemon and lime citrus note just coming around, just sitting all over it. Just, But it's real, real nice. Age-wise, they're very, very similar. I think this lag of villains coming in at 56.5 ABV, so the ABV is a little bit lower than the Castrent Lefroy. Wonderful noses on both of them, guys. I think the Lagavulin's that wee bit more grassy, wee bit more outdoor, wee bit more veggie, smoky. Whereas the, the Lefroy is that typical road tar, iodine, TCP, medicinal. But there's that beautiful savoury and again there's a real nice sweetness. So there's real, real nice noses on both of them to, to start. Hard to split on the nose. But let's see how the palate goes. Let's see how these go down the hatch and let's start with a Lefroy 10 cast strength. Batch 13. Punchy, intense. So they've had the, the batch 11 and the batch 12 of this. Those are a little bit higher ABVs. They came in a little bit hot. This this is hot, but it's not super hot. I think this has benefited from that 57.9% ABV. It's much, much nicer on the arrival. It's dry, it's sooty, it's salty. It's punchy, it's oaky, it's smoky. Wow. Did I just do a poem there? It's, yeah, it's very oaky, it's very smoky. Salty, spicy. Some white pepper. The fruit's coming in now. There's a bit of red fruit on this one. Maybe some red apple. Maybe some bit of red berry, maybe. But is that lovely? Let's do a second sip just to double check. That's so easy to sip considering it's a Lafroy cast strength. Real nice. It's oily, it's thick, it's creamy, it's buttery. That salted caramel is really nice. Lots and lots of salt through this. Wow. It's even gone a little bit through through the arrival into development. It's gone that salted caramel is really dominating. And it's becoming really sticky. Sticky toffee. Not quite a sticky toffee pudding. But it's, it's sticky. It's toffee. It's vanilla. Creamy. Buttery. Heading towards the finish. It's a little bit leathery. Some tobaccos coming in, some pipe tobacco, some smoky, the barbecue there, the savouries there. It's all going on. It's got everything going on with this one, folks. No oh, nice. Let's have a little sip of the Lagavulin. See how that one goes. Let's take a sip of water. What a great job I've got, guys, eh? Lagavulin, Lafroy, who'd have thought this two or three months ago I'd be sitting here enjoying these two bad boy whiskies. Here we go, guys. Let's send this one down the hatch. Cheers. Creamy, oily, thick, textured, wonderful arrival. Not quite as intense as the the Lagavulin. It is a little bit lower ABV. It comes in a little bit lower. But it's still very, very easy to sip. It's wonderful sip. It's that oily, creamy, buttery, thick mouthfeel. I think these both are benefiting for the non-chill filtering. It's much more grassy on the nose, but on, on the 
on the arrival. It's rich, it's oily, it's fruity, it's intense, it's punchy, it's spicy, it's salty. But at the same time, there's a really nice little fizzy note coming in as well. It's like a kind of fizzy sherbet note in there. But real, real nice. But let me have a... Let's have a second sip of this. Wow. Might need to pick up some of these bottles. Let's do a second sip. It's dry. It's woody. There's a bit of wood smoke there. As it develops, though, again, the toffee comes in. Toffee, caramel. It's real, real salty. But at the same time, there's a really lovely savoury note. Maybe some smoky bacon. It's sweet. There's a real nice sweetness. That lemon citrus. Lemon sherbet, maybe. It's very, very fizzy and very sherbety. Wow. Both fantastic. Did I say that wasn't a peak guy? How, how am I doing, folks? Dive in, let me know. It might look as if I'm enjoying these. Velvety, punchy, spicy, smoky, peaty. Both fantastic. Wow. Heading into the finish of that, that that smoky bacon notes coming in a wee bit more prominent. It's so salt. They're both so salty, guys. So they've definitely got those maritime salty notes. Let's do a bit of finish for the Lafroy, and I'll get myself gone. All over this nose, it's got a real, real nice sweet smoke. The smoke's blending into the back. I think now the it's had time to open up. I think the sweetness is really pushing forward to this. Every I think typical of Freud's would all be thinking that they're massive peat bombs. Don't get me wrong, guys. These are peat bombs, but they're a wee bit more than that. There's a bit more going on. Your typical lag of villains and your typical of Freud's. These are these are the the volumes ramped up on both of these two. But let's do a bit for the finish on the Lafroy 10 Castrin. So nice that. Again, I go back to the, 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 the batch 11 and batch 12. I think they were super, super hot. This one's nowhere near as hot as the others. I if I remember off the top of my head, I think batch 12 might have been 60.9. 59 point odd for the other one. So I think they were much, much higher. I'm preferring this at the 57.9% ABV. It's not quite as hot. No need for as much water. I think I had to put as much water into the batch 12 as I did whiskey. So massive, massively hot. This is nowhere near as hot as the batch 12. I'm preferring this to the batch 12, if I was being honest. Finish. Again, it's, it's smoky. It's meaty. It's spicy. It's oaky, and there's a little bit of tobacco, tobacco smoke right on the head on the finish. Finish is, is, is long, it's a long finish. Real, real nice. Let's do a wee bit of finish for on the Lager Villain. Score them. Okay, doing the hatch. They're so different. They're mega, mega different. Totally different whiskies all compl in, in between. Not too sure what the difference is, but they, they've got their own Lafroy characteristics and you've got your Lagavulin characteristics. I think that the finish on this Lagavulin is... It's so salty. Masses, masses of salt. It's spicy, it's salty, it's black pepper all over it. But that fizziness is still there to the finish. That little bit of lemon, little bit of lime. Such, such a good whiskey. Wow, this is going to be so difficult to split them, guys. I know, I think I have to pick a winner now. What do you guys think? You think I can pick a winner out of these two? Let's recap quickly. The both oily, both beautiful textures. 
both creamy, buttery, thickness, beautiful, both benefit for the non-chill filtration. Yes, I'd love to see them with, with both be non-colour, but that's... I, I don't think Lefroy or Lagavulin are going to listen to me. So, right. Wow. Lagavulin, fizzy, smoky, peaty, brainy, salty... All those things going on. The Lafroy was again creamy, buttery, thick, bit more salty caramel in that one. Sticky toffee. Whereas I think the lag of the Lafroy, the lag of Ulan, I think was a wee bit more fizzy, a wee bit more sherbetty. Some beautiful savoury notes, some wonderful barbecued, meaty, smoky notes. Both great. Here's here's where the difference is. 10-year-old Castrent Lafroy, 12-year-old Castrent Lagavulin. £75 for the Lafroy, £128 currently here in the UK. These are prices in the UK, guys. I'm not too sure what they are in global markets. So, yeah, the money, there's quite a bit of difference in the money, folks. Is there enough in the whiskey to justify it? Funnily enough, I think I prefer the Lagavulin. I think I like that, that sweetness, that's that fizziness, that sherbetiness. I think the... Don't get me wrong, guys. If you're fanboys of Lagavulin and you're fanboys of Lafroy, it's going to be... You're going to pick them all day long. But just as as a neutral, I think I'm favouring... I've got a little bit of a preference to the to the Lagavulin. So score-wise, I think I'm looking at a 91 for the Lafroy, guys, don't get me wrong, that's a fantastic score. That's as good a peat whiskey score I think as I've given in this series. So 91 out of 100, but I think at 92, I think the, the, the Lagavulin just nicks it. So, have you tried both of these? Have you tried the Lafroy? Are you a Lagavulin fanboy? Are you a Lafroy fanboy? Do you prefer them at the cast strength? Is the lower range whiskies, the, the, the normal 10, the quarter cask, do they match up? The Lagavulin 16, I believe, is a little hype coming in in the price-wise in that one. The Lagavulin 8, for me, was fantastic. So there's both got fantastic whiskies in the range. For me, I think these are probably the two best whiskies in, in both those ranges. The, the cast strengths, the Lafroy and the Lagavulins. I think if you're into your PT whiskies, you're into your cast strength whiskies, then you'll love both of these. So, guys, that's it. Until the next one. If you've not hit that button yet, just a friendly reminder from me to thee, it doesn't cost you a penny. Yes, it's still free. It's still completely free. It's still not costing you a penny. And you're still helping the channel massively on its way to the Magical 6K. Don't forget to click that bell to be kept up to date with future uploads and live streams. Wow, that's it, guys. All the coins and I've got some whiskey glasses coming soon, so hang out for them. That's pretty much for this one, guys. Until the next time, I'm Alan. I'm the Whiskey Friend. As always, the pleasure is the sharing. And until next time, to the hatch. Cheers.